Hello, everybody. It's Angel's Calamity, and I'm back with more Dream Daddy. This is part five. We're jumping right back into it where we meet Mr. Vega, aka Hugo, at the school. Let's see what's up. And bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Uh, don't you teach high schoolers? Mm -hmm. Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Please call me Hugo. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but I'm sure you know Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Hmm. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments that have been done rather poorly on test. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda has always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we just moved. She's fine, or she has a tendency to bottle things. I think I'm just gonna go, we just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. See, if you can talk to her about it, I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Mm -hmm. Yes? Did they ever catch that rye? Ha. Ha ha. Literary, literary joke. Catcher in the rye. Get it? Oh. I mean, yes. That's it? Okay. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school, but I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she'd appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Oh. Woot. I pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about a celebrity crushes. So, you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Oh. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some gr dinner? Sure thing. Sweet. Oh, we can make something at home or let's go to the food mall for court. Well, she already asked something for dinner. So let's go to the food mall food mall food court. That's what it said, right? Yes. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Hmm? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents, and that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And and maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Mm -hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vegas said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Huh. Oh, I'm fine, Pop. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vegas' class. Eh? It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight, and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Ugh. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. Frustrating. Oh, I hate that. That is so frustrating. Um, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. 
Are you bummed out that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. More like it's a dirty joke. Okay. Uh, who are you texting? Uh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? <sighs> yep. Do you like Noah? Huh? What? No! Dad! Uh. I can't believe you would. Uh. Dad! I mean, geez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess the conversation's over. To the mall, then. Woo, mall bound. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. That sounds great. Hell yeah. Oh my god, hell yeah. Ah. Language, Missy. Hmm. Heck yeah. <sighs> Better. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy res restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. Why are y'all putting down hating on mall food, okay? That is fine dining for the likes of me. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you want me just to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? Can I have all of the above? I'm feeling a little, a little peckish tonight. I extend my hand to her. Would you be the honor of sharing some nachos? Wow, I know how to speak English. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Huh. She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a Ricky D table and dig in. What? These are bad. These are very bad but also strangely delicious. Hmm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, oh, oh. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Hmm. Uh, which meme? All memes? Uh. She, Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hand. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are the inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, it's all... All us yous have already done the joke to death. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Ugh. And what's worse is that these movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? I'm so glad the developers have a sense of humor. Uh, Dad, please. Huh. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Want to go to that goth store? Mm -hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment, despite being an exact representation of this of the establishment. Yeah. That one. Not naming any names, though. Of course not. Never. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Huh? Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. <laughs> oh, that one. Right. Hot topic. Here we are. Amanda runs in the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. <laughs> there it is! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so proud. Speech! Amanda. Hey. Speech, 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 speech! 
All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Huh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would be that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Smith had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Hmm. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, he proceeded. she proceeded to throw up all over the display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which just to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Yeah. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first and then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Oh, hey, chain wallets! While Amanda busies herself looking at brand t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for Dad to look at in these... In, at in a dead goth and beyond pa uh, peruse the band t-shirts look at the ironic mugs check the clearance bin for hot deals um I, uh, we're gonna he loves coffee let's look at some mugs I guess I don't know I'm suddenly stricken by an existential fear if there's only one number one dad then why are there so many mugs here that say that this whole time I thought I was the only one Pfft. if I'm not number one where do I place on the global dad ranking charts I have work to do. I don't know whose voice this is, so I just read it in mine for now. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear... Hi. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. Uh, I can see that. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Oh, my. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said the blouse was Victorian-inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of an Edwardian dressage. His voice was like, oh my, but I don't know if I can do that voice all the time. Maybe I'll try. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Huh. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. A man tries up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh, boy. Here it comes. Uh -huh. Hey, Dadtron 5000! Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops a shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. Uh. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag, and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out to the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit down on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Long hair Paul Hall Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? That's a hell of a name. Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over that Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts. Mm -hmm. Also, oh, also the trucks are haunted. Of course they are. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh, no, the ghost done got out control of the truck. I can't steer them then their damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try to communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Oh, I almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying, you're going to die. Mm. That's because we're about to die, you. Huh. This is art. The episode ends, and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I mean, same. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Ooh, will we have good dreams? Will we dream of sexy boys? Will we dream of Robert? I don't know. Zzz. Snoring sounds. Zzz.
Zzz. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. You have never, n ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning together putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny annuals. We're able to put together a few shelves in one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Eh, it works. So, are you ex so are you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills? If there's food, I'm excited or eh. I'm gonna beef up my grilling skills because... We are a dad, and it's a requirement to make bad jokes. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot dog grill tips, I think we can consider it a success. Hmm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Are you talking about me? I think he's talking about me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. <laughs> the social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Hey. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up at a cookout on time? How early is this barbecue? They just got up. Oh, no, they put, they put together furniture. Never mind. You know what? We're going early just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Is Joseph the creepy one? I think he's a creepy one. Mm -hmm. I, get, uh, I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs waves through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie tray down to a ta on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wait to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Ah, yes. Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. I think that's what I had for him, right? Close enough? It's close enough. And you brought veggies! <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Uh. Hi. <laughs> this is Christian and Chrisette. Why did I say Chrisette? Christy, they're twins. Ah. They stare creepily and say nothing. No, thank you. Can No, can we get rid of those? Ah. Thanks. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Mary put him in his crib. Oh, no, it's a woman from the bar the other night. Oh, what is she doing here? Oh. Hmm. Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hey. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Oh. I'll have to go... Oh, what did I... What, did, what was the voice for her? I'll have to go look for him. Oh. What? You'll have to? Yeah. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Loki and his daughter, Amanda. Hmm. I would shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. You have another hand. I love her. Nice to, uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if he... Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that, Mary's knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Yeah. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. And all the guys that are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I picked it some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Dad. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Uh, that's me. Hmm. Dad. Ugh, they're going to talk about weather. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. You know, Amanda, you remind me of my niece, Lily. Hmm. 
<laughs> Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Oh, dang. Robert's here? Didn't that the guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who's throwing a fit in dead goth and beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? So many dudes. So many dudes! Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Oh. I think I'm going to leave this video right here. I know. I know. I'm awful. Just as it started to get good. I know. And uh, tell you what. In the comments below, you guys tell me who we're going to talk to. Are we going to talk to Robert and Brian, Matt, Hume, Hugo, and Craig, Joseph and Damien, or Burger Time? So, uh, yeah. Let me know in the comments below who you guys want me to talk to first. Thanks for watching. This has been Angel's Calamity playing Dream Daddy Part 5. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.